Katarina here and I'm so excited to be sharing with you a incredible story with Silvana Lima. I have just spent an hour and a half speaking with her about her health challenges that stemmed from breast implant illness or BII. It's really interesting how many women still don't understand the repercussions of getting breast implants. I myself was one of them and education and research is incredibly important. 10 years ago, there wasn't much studies about this. Now there is a lot. And Silvana speaks about her journey. And not only did, you know, did she have two implants done? She's had a few surgeries. But with that, the second surgery has really taken her down a spiral lane of even medical malpractice. It's incredibly interesting. I cannot wait to shoot over to her. But just before we do, I just wanted to let you know of a particular study back in 2018 where just shy of a million participants were involved in this study and what resulted was a six times increase in arthritis, a four and a half times increase in stillbirths and 4x increase of melanoma. Back in 2019, the FDA have even considered banning and looking at cancelling breast implants altogether. So this is a serious red flag. So I do want to state that this podcast is not to treat, diagnose or cure. It's for educational purposes only. If you have any concerns, please speak to your medical practitioner. So Sylvie, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I really love your story. It's one that probably really prompted me to actually get my mm. implants out and the bravery and the courage that you had. Mm. So can you tell us your story, your journey? Like, take us back. Why did you get the implants in in the first place? Wow. I think that there is the excitement about putting implants in for all the women that has gone through this journey. You know, that moment that you all want to look good, you all want to feel confident in your skin. And obviously myself coming from Brazil, which is a culture where uh, – breast implants and plastic surgery in general it's so common it's like going to get your eyebrows done wow it's this common so um coming from the culture where i came from it was just something that everyone was doing at that time and i felt like to fit in and to look as good as those girls i had to look exactly the same and i had to do the same procedure so that's where it started with me in the first place And obviously, when you are going through that time where you are so excited, all you think about is the lingerie you're going to be buying, is the nice dresses, the nice tops and T-shirts and showing off your new body and, you know, picturing yourself being confident. When you book that first call and when you, you, you go and see your doctor, the doctor will not explain uh, as well as you know, the negative side effects of things. And uh, I think that maybe now doctors like Mark Lee will explain to you what is it that you actually put into your body and the negative effects that's going to cause in your health in the long term. But previously when I did my surgery, um, which was two surgeries that I actually done previously, I had two sets of breast implants before I changed this one, take this one out. Um, None of them outline any of the risks Mm. So coming back to right to the beginning, it was all excitement and I wanted to look good, look like the other girls and not much education around the negative sides of of the implants. Yeah, it's a really interesting point because I remember when I got mine done, it was actually in Thailand back in, oh, it was back when I was 21, I think it was 22 and um, no, to about 21. And I remember even the surgeon there said basically the implications of what can happen during surgery, but nothing about long term. But I think there was such a massive fad that was like it was so popular to get your breasts done during that time. And I think this is going back 10 years ago. Yeah. So, so many women wanting to get their implants mm-hmm. in and wanting to get bigger and bigger without even understanding because I don't think there was any long time, longitudinal studies or even the long-term effects of what actually was going no, on at that not. time. But it's interesting because it's coming out now. And, you know, from sharing with what Dr. Mark Lee said to you, you know, he's getting more out yeah. and more in. Then when I saw him, he said the same thing. That was nuts because I really like the fact that he's currently doing studies on all of his patients at the moment. Yeah. 
and he's uh, in particular said the amount of bacteria that can actually have amongst the the, the implants um, causing you know can- cancers and there's yep. you know even the liquid that's around the silicon that gets produced there's you know cancers that have been formed to show forms through that period so I really want to go back to understand back you you know during that because you're so right and a lot mm. of women do get their implants for confidence yeah and I know that was one of my reasons yeah. it wasn't for confidence but I just wanted boobs yeah um because I lost my boobs in high school <laughs> well li- leaving out of high school I should say um so like tell me like so it's a cultural thing in Brazil yeah I think uh, plastic surgeries in general in Brazil um are very well developed mm. and it's very common it's something that we all do and the bbls now bbls that's so big now as well people putting plants on their their glutes or moving fat from here to there yeah. this is also starting in south america mm. right the big curves the big glutes so a lot of this plastic surgery is very well developed it has started a long time ago in brazil like uh, uh, butt surgery something that started many years ago in brazil and now it's worldwide now mm. everyone sign up to my program because they want a big butts right mm. and i have to explain look a lot of it is surgery you know yeah. like the boobs uh, but yeah, I think with myself was a lot of lack of confidence culturally in South America. Um, beauty, you know, it's a huge thing for women. Mm. Huge. It's if you don't fit in, you are completely out. Yeah. Wow. So people will look for the surgeries and anything that they can do to look in a certain way and fit in that mode of beauty. Mm, you know, and, and I was very, very young and um, very easily. Um, persuasive by friends and uh, friends that have done it mm. around me so I end up doing that as well and as you said at that time there was not much research there was not much data that we have now but in saying that I found that nowadays a lot of women is still a lot of women is still not aware mm. of the health implications so it's I'm so happy that you're starting this podcast mm. that will help so many women out there that I still going for the surgery with all the excitement of looking better, gain their confidence back. Is still now, people don't know. No. Like I had clients that sign up with me this year that have just gone through the surgery for the first time. Some women over forties for the first time, and they are just so confident, so happy with their body. And when I talk to them about the implications in their mental health, implications in their gut health implication of your hormonal levels, inflammation markers, and so on, so on, they have absolutely no idea. And Mm. those are women that have done this procedure this year. Yeah, wow. It's really interesting because women think it's going to fix their mindset and give them the confidence, but it's a short-term fix Mm. because you're going to have to take the implants out no matter what. They say you have to take them out within 10 to 15 years. So it's a Band-Aid effect. So... I am of the belief that, you know, get your confidence first. Don't get implants for confidence to really work on yourself. And I I really feel that every woman should feel beautiful. And I think every woman is beautiful and gorgeous. And I think that all it takes is just to have that little bit of confidence and happiness within themselves and to know that they don't need implants to make them feel that way. Mm. So, you know, that's why wanted to touch on that subject with some mm-hmm. of your girls because I know you're creating a movement right now amongst yeah. women you know sh- the, the the photo shoots that you do you know showcasing these gorgeous women of all sizes you know that ha- that they are beautiful and I think that's a really beautiful movement that you're mm-hmm. doing so how has it have been on an effect like to them like you just mentioned that you know some of them have considered implants yeah. and have they gone through it what has happened after like are they still having the same mindset issues? Mm-hmm. Like what's currently going on there? A lot of my clients do have um, uh, breast implants and it's one of our questions even on our discovery call, on our forms for, you know, health screening to, you know, if you have a mental health, if you have gut health issues, is one of the questions, do you have breast implants? Because it's directly related to it. So a lot of my clients do have it and I do provide the education that I know that um, – they might have heard a little bit about breast implant illness, but they don't know the extent and how much that's going to be impacting their lives. 
mm-hmm. everything. So this is the this is part of my job to pass this information to them and give them the data that they need to see that this is this is serious. This is a very serious issues. And as I said, I signed up to a few people this year, and a couple of them just got their implants in this year. Yeah, wow. Uh, very mature women that had kids and just, mm. you know, wanted to get their confidence back. And plastic surgery obviously was the first thing in their list, and not the health. Mm. You know, they first got the surgery done to then book a discovery call with me to wow. find out how they could become healthier. Wow. You know, so um, plastic surgery is, is where a lot of women are going to first mm. to fix their, you know, um, their relationship with their bodies. And when the, we know as women, we know that everything starts within. It's truly the connection that we have with ourselves that's lacking. Mm. The connection that we have with our own health. You know, yeah. the, the connection we have with ourselves needs to come first. That needs to be fixed first. And once mm. we prioritize this our connection with everyone else around us will improve, it will change. But a lot of women are not aware of that and what they're going for first is the surgery. Yeah. Right. Well, it always comes to social media as well, having a massive Huge. impact. You know, there's so many girls who are following, probably following more of their of these influencers, if you'd call them that, yeah. influencers out there to who are showcasing their bodies and, yeah, they're, they're beautiful, but... Mm. They don't realize that, you know, that does affect self-esteem and, Huge. you know, their yeah. own belief of who they are truly as a person, as an individual, and um, hence why they go down these paths. But I'd love to know, has any of your girls experienced symptoms after getting the implants? And has it? F- and the second question is, has it fixed their mindset of their belief of, of their bodies, or are they still carrying that even after mm. getting the implants in? It hasn't fixed it. Yeah, okay. I do have clients that have implants, and it came to me with symptoms of depression, um, very low esteem, and um, those feelings only got worse and, and not better. Mm. So it's part of my job to educate them. But in the end of the day, it's it's a very intimate journey. They need to make a decision on their own. You can just mm. give the information like we're doing here right now. Yeah. But um, it is a very, very hard decision for a lot of women to take that step and take the implants out. It's a painful process, you know, mm. and um, you do need the support to, mm. to be able to do this, you know. Um, with myself, it was after my second lot of implants when I realized, wow, there is something really wrong with me that the doctors couldn't work it out. Mm. Like my symptoms of depression, anxiety worsened ridiculously, like huge. And also the main main symptoms I felt, it wasn't even related to the mindset, but was gut health. I I, will, I could not be eating more organic, more I could not be more on top of my diet, and I was constantly bloated. My inflammation markers was constantly high, no matter how well. And I knew what I was doing with my diet, but my inflammation markers was always high. I was always bloated, and I could not lose weight. That was the strongest symptom for me. After I done that surgery, um, six months pra- after my surgery, that's when the symptoms started. Um, and then the second symptom that was really strong was the pain on my back between mm. my shoulder blades. So those two symptoms were so strong that I, I couldn't train properly. Um, I was scared to eat vegetables. There was absolutely nothing I could eat that wouldn't blow to me. And besides of the fact that I could never lose weight, ever. And I was just putting on weight, 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 which was very uncommon for someone that was so fit and health mm. for so many years. Going to doctors, couldn't find answers, and then obviously joined the Institute of Health and learning how to do functional blood analysis with yourself, with Jake, mm. and learning all the effects on implants in my health that's that's where I started questioning is th- could that be the reason went to the doctor no no we couldn't be I'm like there is something that's not right here and I need to find the answer so I did do a, a scan and it was three years after 
I done that surgery and it came out that both of my implants were not just ruptured, but they were ex- pretty much exploded. No. There were ho- big holes on them and the silicone was leaking uh, into my lymph nodes. I still have silicone on, on one of my lymph nodes under this arm that I'll have to manage for the rest of my life because the only way to get rid of is actually removing my lymph nodes, which can cause even more problems, so I'm not going to touch it. And I'll manage this with Dr. Mark Lee, who will be doing scans yearly with me to make sure that there is nothing worse than it done. All the detoxification protocols for lymphatic system to help that, but it's silicone is a, is a harder uh, gel. Mm. It's not like a liquid. So it's something that I'll have to keep my eye on for forever, you know. And the moment I took that silicone out of me, the very next day, I was so sore from that surgery, mm. but the next day, that pain on my shoulder blades was gone. Wow. And it was three years of dry needling, chiropractor, mm. physiotherapy, stretching. I hate stretching. <laughs> stretching. <laughs> and that pain wouldn't go. And oh, it, wow. So it's very important that I pass this message to everyone out there. I did not feel pain directly in my breasts. There was no pain in my breasts. Mm. It was um, the amount of gut health issues I had, it was out of this world. I looked nine months pregnant. Like every time I would have a, a piece of corn chip or yeah. or even health food sometimes would make me sick. And the pain in my back. Never felt anything in my... In your imp- breasts. Nothing. Yeah. Absolutely nothing, which is really bizarre. Because you think you would, but it's under the muscle as well. So that's mm. why. Um, but yeah, this this was... At three years, it, it stole three years of my life. That's how I feel. Like I, I lost my fitness, I lost my mental health. Was the worst as, as ever being. Got health issues. Our chronic fatigue. Extremely tired. You know. Um, yeah, it's not worth it. So, I, on that note, I want to go back because you said your second lot of implants in. Mm -hmm. So I want to go back to where did you have them done? And if we can, if we can just go into the moment Mm. because I really want to understand the emotions, the psyche behind you actually getting them in and what was currently going on in your life at that time because I think this is a really important point because many women get the implants in because there's sometimes something going on in their life. Yeah. So was there anything going on in your life during that time? Mm-hmm. And to like, where did you have them done? That's a really good question because a lot of people might be thinking out there, oh, maybe she got just cheap doctor, it was cheap implants. Mm-hmm. And they were actually Johnson Johnson mentors, which were at that time considered one of the best implants in the mm-hmm. world. I actually had 20 years of warranty on those implants. And I did my surgery in Brazil with one of the best doctors, if not the best doctors in my town. The surgery cost me so much. It wasn't a cheap surgery at all. So I had my own nurse for myself. I, you know, had everything included in the package with the best doctor in on the best hands. So mm-hmm. it wasn't a cheap surgery. I didn't go to whatever Thailand or Bali and Bali and got mm-hmm. a cheap surgery done. So that's a very important thing that we should put it out there that, it doesn't matter how expensive you're paying. It doesn't matter how good the doctor is. You are susceptible to, you know, things can go wrong. Mm. And um, at that moment, I I was really excited because I was in this beautiful clinic with the best doctor. And I decided to do this surgery because um, simply because I had my previous implants for more than 10 years. Okay. And I knew I had to change at some point. So... I was super excited to get the surgery done in Brazil with my family. My sister was there so she could support me uh, during the recovery phase. And the doctor, I chose the size. I didn't want to change the size. I wanted the same size. It was small implant. I didn't want anything bigger. Went to the surgery. When I left the surgery room, I looked, I remember looking it down. First of all, I woke up in tears. I was screaming, crying. 
and distressed. And then I looked it up. My sister was there crying. And I looked it down. My boobs were this big. And I'm like, wow, I'm really swollen this time. First time I did my implants, I wasn't this big. Wow, that's really swollen. Maybe it's because of the second surgery. And then I looked at my sister crying. She's like, are you okay? She's like, this surgery took way too long. And doctors couldn't give me the answer. What happened? She's like, are you okay? You're fine. And then the next day, the doctor came to talk to me and said, I made a um, professional decision. I put the implants that you chose in. And as a surgeon, I know what's best for you. And I didn't believe that was the right size for you. So I took them out and I put a bigger set of implants in you. Are you kidding me? How ca- Okay. <laughs> I just want to go on that note. First of all, I want to speak to the camera here. How can a surgeon make an executive decision on what they think is good for a client to put, what, 10x of what you... Of in the size, like double the size of mm. what you originally wanted to go for. Like you can't do that without consent. Mm. Like with anything, you should always get the, the patient's consent mm. over anything. So this infuriates me because we can then go down to like medical malpractice. Mm. And this shit happens all the time. But it's very hidden. So mm. I want to, did you complain? Like what happened after that? I was in shock. Like I had limited time. I was in Brazil for that and I yeah. had to come back to Australia, come back to work and, you know, to come back to my life. And I didn't know what to do. What am I going to do? I have to recover from this. So I'm going to go live with this. And he said to me, it's just really swollen. It will come down. And and then I had to come back to Australia. So I waited for months to that to get go smaller. <laughs> and it was three years of my life where mm. I was asking my partner to, um, um, you know, make my boobs small in every single photo. You know, my Brett Earl, he's my partner. He's a photographer, videographer. So every single photo, I would ask him to make my boobs smaller. Please, can you make my boobs smaller? For three years of my life, make my boobs smaller. <laughs> I was embarrassed of them. But at the same time, I didn't want to go through another surgery. I just wanted to allow my, my, my body to heal from that. And then later on, I would do the surgery to make them smaller. But in saying that... I had no idea that those implants were actually bursted inside of me from pretty much the day after that surgery. So I still don't really know what happened in that. But during that time when I found out that they were three years later, when I found out, okay, I met with Mark Lee, went to my consult and he said, Sylvia, those implants here looks like they have been leaking for at least minimum of three years. And I said to him, but I just put them three years ago. He's like, oh, silicone went all the way to a lymph node. So this has been linked inside of you pretty much from the day of your surgery. Oh, gosh. And here I am trying to heal my body from that. So then I could do another surgery. But actually, that thing was killing me this whole time for three years. No one could help me or give me answers why I couldn't lose weight, why my inflammation markers were so high why I had ridiculous amount of bloatiness and gut health issues, why I had chronic fatigue. No one could explain to me until actually I joined the Institute of Health mm. and learned myself with Jake and yourself and got the information I need to, to change in, and improve my health myself. And now I'm able to give the same level of information to my clients that want to put breast implants or have a breast implants and correlate those symptoms with that. That is real. Mm. That is not something that's making up. The moment I took those implants from from my body, majority of the symptoms improved instantly. Yeah. Do you give permission for us to show on this podcast the pictures of your ruptured implants? 100%. Okay. It's, it's disgusting. It's unbelievable, but yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to pause for three seconds just yeah. so we can show those that picture of those implants. Mm-hmm. Okay. I want to go back because I'm very protective and I'm very like, oh, I feel like a warrior right now because I'm like, this shit should not be happening. So has this been reported to Johnson & Johnson? And secondly, has this been reported to that doctor over in Brazil? Yeah, look, it's actually something that I had to pause because when I found out what was going on, I got to be emotional because – 
it's um yeah like we do things because we want to feel better you know we want to be more confident in ourselves little you know that thing is killing you you know and you trust you pay a lot of money you trust when I contacted the doctor in Brazil, he said, you have to come to Brazil. So the only way I can help if you come to Brazil and I can redo the surgery for you. And it was in the middle of COVID. Um, I, obviously, I couldn't fly. And I, and I said, you have no idea how urgent this is. This is killing me. Um, it is a money that I, I wasn't planning to take out of my bank account, whatever, 15000 20000 to to do a surgery. And he gave me no assistance. And he's uh, one of the richest doctors in there. He gave me no assistance. What he said that he would do is put a complaint to Johnson Johnson. Um, then I contacted Johnson Johnson, and they treated me absolutely like garbage. They said that the moment you put those implants inside of you, you signed a document accepting all the risks. So it's your problem, not ours. Uh, the only assistance and help that we can give you is brand new implants to put back inside of you. Exactly the same implants that on the first place broke inside of me. So that was the only assistance. And, and it's a very important thing for me to put it out there because when you are signing the papers and you purchasing that surgery and they're offering like they're offering this 20 years warranty johnson johnson uh, mentors best implants never gonna burst and all of these it's all lie the oh. 20 years warranty is two sets of new implants if they break inside of you and i did i i redid so much research on it and i found out that it's a very common thing to happen burst into six months, six months into a year. Of Johnson & Johnson. Johnson & Johnson is actually a very right. common thing. But I had no idea of this because when you go into a surgery room, the doctor sells the, the products that they're selling, right? Well, they get commission, right? So they yeah. get commission on top of every product that they get, not only just the surgery. Exactly. And a lot of the time when they burst, first burst inside of you, you cannot capture that doing a scan. The only way that you can capture when it's early stage is doing an MRI. Who is going to be doing an MRI to check on the implants? Like, mm. you know, unless you are someone who actually have all this information and is super scared and will be doing scans. But in early stage, you cannot capture it. So during early stage, I, I was already sick. For three years, I was sick, sick. But I only captured that on a scan when it was already really bad. I actually did a scan two years before I captured that and was already leaking, but it, they couldn't see that on the skin. I had to done an MRI to be able to see anything. So it was really sad, mm. you know. If I had the information I have now, on the first year of that surgery, in the first six months, I would know there was something wrong. But all the symptoms wasn't directly on my breast. So I was constantly looking for leaky gut, SIBO, gut health issues when it was actually my implants that was leaking inside of me. And I have no idea. Yeah, what people don't understand is the meridian lines that come through, which can actually cause, you know, certain impacts through other organs of the body. So, uh, which is... Something else that we'll speak later, yeah. uh, which, is an, which is a little bit aside from the breast implants, but something else that does need to take a little bit of awareness. So I want to know more about your symptoms around the time after getting those second implants in, mm. because I don't think people understand the implications no matter they hear it, mm. but it's real. For example, I remember reading a recent study um, out of a, I know it's a very small study, but um, recent studies for the statistics, uh, 107 out of 107 cases, there was about 20, se uh, 107 cases, was about 27, um, I think it was something like that. So 27 people actually got BII and they developed, there's a sac that, um, like fluid that happened that occurs around the, the breast implants that it actually causes cancer. Mm. 
And I know the FDA were actually looking at cancelling breast implants altogether because of the serious effects. I don't know what's happened now, but that was back in 2019. Mm. Um, so I really want to understand more about your symptoms. Mm. How bad were they? And uh, tell me more about what was currently going on. It was bad. It was really bad. I truly feel like there was three years of my life that was stolen from me. I lived and I worked, but it was painful. It was truly painful. I was constantly pain between my shoulder blades and the gut health issues I have, I had. I don't have that anymore. The gut health issues I had, it really impacted anything that I wanted to do. It wasn't just a little bloatiness. It was constantly everything I would eat would make me really sick. And another thing was I was constantly tired. No matter how well I was sleeping, no matter how many hours of sleep, I, I had to stop in the middle of the day and have a nap, and I would wake up feeling exhausted. I was constantly really tired. And I couldn't, I could catch anything. Like my immune system was always in distress. Like if there is any virus or any flus or anything going around, I would catch it and everyone would get better but me. I would stay sick for a good six months. Mm. So I was constantly getting sick and then finally recovering from it and catch something else. My immune system was under so much stress. And um, for someone like myself, who is a health coach, who is very well educated when it comes to what to eat, movement, and living a healthy life, it was painful. It was frustrating. And I felt like a failure. There were many times in my life I felt like giving up on being a health coach because what? how can I be a health coach and help people to be healthy when I feel like shit every day for years, mm -hmm. I might as well find something else to do because I'm failing my own health. So I got to a point of thinking of giving up. I actually, when I was 18 still, I had to stop PT um, around seven to eight months prior to my surgery because physically I couldn't pick anything up. Because the pain was so excruciating on this arm, my arm was getting numb, which was the left side of my implants was exploded. It and was into pieces. And, and that's th where you've got the lymph node thing there now. Okay. My arm would get numb, so I couldn't pick things up. So I had to stop working. I lost income. And my confidence was gone. Because as a health coach, you want to feel healthy. Mm. As like, you know, and I was mm. trying everything, try nothing worked. So those symptoms and plus need dry needling to help me with the, with back, the pain. back pain, uh, constantly seeing the chiropractor, um, you know, trying numerous protocol for different kind of gut health issues. It was exhausting. Mentally, you can, you can only imagine what that did to me mentally mm. because coaching is my passion. Like I want to help women to improve their health, their well-being, becoming stronger, develop this connection, w that strong connection with themselves. And I was losing that myself. I was losing it and I was losing my passion for what I was doing. It was, it, it really destroyed my life for three years. It took the life out of me. And when I contacted that doctor in Brazil and he cared less, it was I remember crying for a whole month when I found that out because I could not believe I was living like that for three years. That was stealing the life out of me. And when I called Johnson & Johnson and the doctor, they're like, it's not our problem. If you want a new set of implants, there we go. You're still going to have to pay for a surgery in full, but that's all you're going to get from us. It's interesting considering the medical oath that every doctor is or well, has to do upon receiving the doctorate and, you know, uh, they, it was, they, he said that they actually cared less. Um, the, the, the people that I spoke to at Johnson Johnson, they were so aggressive towards me that I had to ask my partner to talk to them because I was in that position. I was so depressed mm -hmm. and I just want to get that thing out of me. Mm -hmm. Like 
it was really difficult. So I talked to a lawyer, a medical lawyer, and he said to me, I have 10 years to take action if I wanted to. And that was when I decided to pause everything because I would need an international lawyer because I did my surgery in Brazil. And I decided to put a pause because I didn't have the mental health at that stage to fix my body, get rid of that, that implants and go back to work again, you know, like myself again. I didn't have the mental health to deal with that because it's, they're strong. They will destroy you. They make you feel like you have zero power and it's your problem that you're going through all of this. Even though the implants were bur bursting pretty much just after my surgery, they, they take no responsibility. Wow. Wow. There was a lot of tears. It was a very difficult time in my life, you know. Mm -hmm. And there was moments where I felt I took the blame on myself because in the end of the day, I chose to do the surgery. It's my responsibility. Mm -hmm. I chose to put that thing inside of my body, you know. So I took the blame on myself, but nobody else took responsibility. When I needed that money, I need that support, I need that kindness, mm -hmm. I got exactly the opposite. I got zero from them. Well, I feel like we need to end it there because I think that says it all because because <laughs> <laughs> um, a really big thing is that people don't speak about this. Mm. And so thank you so much for actually sharing your story. Yeah. Um, you, we almost shed a tear. I felt yeah. your tears because mine was coming as well because people don't realise that autoimmunity. We've seen this from our friend yeah. Izzy who, you know, there's autoimmunity as well that can come from it. There's... I know Jake, um, so my fiance, Jake Carter, he received so many messages after speaking about breast palm illness um, last year that there was even a woman who became blind after her surgery mm. and it wasn't until they did the explant that her eyesight was regained. <laughs> like it's insane the things yeah. that can actually happen and – you was talking about gut health issues and you're talking about, you know, your backache being sore up there. And, you know, we all our organs and our whole body is all interconnected, you know, and there's a similar issue that, you know, I faced from having a tooth issue, which I know you also had the similar issue. Um, you know, our whole body and all our organs are connected. Yeah. So just because you have something in, it doesn't mean that it's not going to affect um other parts of your body because we all know like it, it does like you, you've got meridian lines you know everything all your organs everything's all connected so it's really interesting that you were experiencing those second those secondary symptoms in relation to your breast implants mm -hmm. because your gut health like how were your symptoms after you finally had them removed and I know you're going to have you're going to be long-term affected because of that lymph node. Mm -hmm. um, we all know how important it is to, to have your lymphatic system flowing because it's your, it's your main drainage pathway. Mm -hmm. So it's what helps drain everything and you're going to have a blockage there. So mm -hmm. like tell us like now, like what's your journey looking like now? Like mm -hmm. how's your symptoms been after getting those implants out? Mm -hmm. And like, what do you, what do you have to now do to ensure that your that arm, like, yeah, 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 like, I, I'm very fortunate that I, I have a, a good surgeon here in Perth, uh, Mark Lee, to to guide me on that, and um, I feel I feel like I'm in really good hands, and we can do scans and make sure that you know that is not you know becoming a, another issue that we'll have to sort it out later, um, and my symptoms. It really felt like I regained my life back. Mm. My energy levels has improved, but mainly my gut health issues is it's crazy. Like, and I don't get sick as I used to. Like, yes, I get a flu here, but I get better. Mm. I get a flu like a normal person, you know, and I get better. Um, I I don't feel the pains I was feeling in my between my shoulder blades anymore. I don't need the dry needling that I was getting you know, weekly sometimes to help me deal with that pain between my short blades. It's, it's amazing. That disappeared the day after my surgery, which was really interesting. The gut health, it was gradual 
until I realized, oh my God, even if I eat a little bit of gluten, I'm not dying. You know, mm. I, I don't eat gluten anyway, but I, I started remember after my surgery, uh, Brett was like, why are you eating bread? It's going to kill you. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't wait to try things. And I was just so curious to try foods that I could not touch. I could not even smell that before. Mm -hmm. And I was eating white bread. I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> I am not dying. Like purely. It's like, white bread. It's not sourdough. It's white bread. It's white bread. <laughs> You know, and I was like slowly introducing different things in my diet, which is not part of my diet really, but it just feels good to be able to eat those things once in a while. If I'm out, if I want to, I can do this without the fear of looking like a literally nine months pregnant woman, no clothes fit on me. The pain was excruciating and there was absolutely nothing that would come down. Sometimes I would be like that for a whole week. Mm. The, all those symptoms gone. Wow. I'm not going to even put in here the, no, the amount of money I spent trying to fix that as well. Mm -hmm. Supplementation protocol, mm -hmm. you know. Coaches. Coaches, pro, yeah. womb healing, everything <laughs> they're putting under the sun. I've tried everything. <laughs> Nothing would sort of, it's like I might as well not eat anything, you know, and live fasting for the rest of my live life. Do a 10-day fast, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but it was very noticeable that how my body is just completely changing. And my partner was like, I cannot believe. Brett was like, I cannot believe you can eat this stuff now. Like you mm. could not even smell it and you would get sick. Mm. So they got, got health issues. And I'm very grateful. I went through all this experience. It was really tough experience, but I'm very grateful. I didn't develop an autoimmune disease or something worse. So I'm very grateful that it got fixed. You know, I'm here today. If I want to lose weight, my body will lose weight. If I want to put on muscle, my body will put on muscle. I know my body's actually respond healthily to the, the plans and the programs and the things I know how to do now. Mm. So I'm very grateful that I got my body back to where it is now. Uh, but that experience is something I do not wish that to anyone because it affected my relationship, affect my job, affect my relationship with friends you know, with people, I didn't want to go out. I was so tired that I would much rather just stay at home and sleep. Mm. You know, I wasn't happy. It, it took the life out of me, you know. So I consider every scenario when you decide to go for this surgery and really research, do your own research. Don't just listen to what the doctor is saying, trying to sell you the size and get you excited about it. Really get into this research like really deeply before you you make your decision absolutely and on that note like I was actually quite really impressed when I met Dr Mark Lee um he didn't try to sell me to put implants in because his thing was you know do you he asked me the question do I want to have kids and I said absolutely I want to have kids mm. this is one of the reasons why I actually want these out I don't feel like I want to breastfeed a child when I've got implants or something in yes mine are behind the muscle but I just want it to be natural for the child I, we all know the the implications of toxins and all mm -hmm. these kind of stuff that gets excreted and I, I didn't want anything to be impacting the baby whether it's you know it's growth or you know even if it's it's health yeah. so um and the other thing as well I mean there was uh I think six times like what we heard was a four and a half times more um, impact of stillbirths yeah. just from having breast implants in. So I wanted to ensure that I have every opportunity and everything going from when I'm having a child. Yeah. So that way we can give birth naturally without any implications. So it's really interesting. So I want to know when, so on when you mentioned, so going back when you mentioned about, you know, the surgeons and really to do your research, Dr. Mark Lee didn't try to sell me yeah. to put implants in. Yeah. He literally said, nope, we're not touching it. He goes, maybe if you want to, after you have your kids and after you breastfeed, yeah. we can look at a lift, but I'm not going to try to sell you anything. He goes, That's just so let's just get them out. Yeah. And that to me is a caring surgeon. Yeah. That to me is finally there's someone in the medical field that actually gives a shit about their patients, yeah. and which is rare. And, you know, it's so – it was – so nice and we were just it 
just felt like you were cared for. Yeah. So thank you so much for introducing me to Dr. Markley <laughs> because you know I had a really beautiful experience and I yeah. cannot wait to get him on this podcast as well to share to the world his findings because mm. I know he's done an extreme amount of research and published yeah. medical journals mm-hmm. based on his findings, yeah. you know, the bacteria and everything that c- gets produced from having um, breast implants and everything he's been finding. We all know as well mm. with there's a you know, mold can even grow on breast implants. What It's another factor that it's probably what I'm kind of afraid of because, of, you know, some of the mold – amount of static shocks that I give everybody. I'm literally like a, <laughs> uh, you know. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I don't know if that, that's the reason. I don't know. We'll shall find out if they go after the, the explant. Yeah. So what is your journey like now, Sylvie? Like you've had them out. Yeah. What's your future like? What's your journey now moving forward? I Since I joined the Institute of Health, and since I've learned the effects of everything in your health, we're talking about mold, we talk about candida, we talk about SIBO, leaky gut, any gut health issues, we're talking about, oh man, it is just like thyroid issues, hormonal issues, you know, it's everything. Um, and throughout the three years I have been working with you guys, closely with you guys, I've just changed my whole life. It's just unbelievable how... Um, you know, from removing breast implants to try all kind of protocols, mental health, you know, all the woo-woo stuff that we do, breath work and all of that that I absolutely love. And also, um, man, it's taking a tooth out because of root canal, remove all my, um, um, you know, metal feelings, going all the detoxification protocol for that as well. I have practiced so much of what I learned in the Institute of Health, which gave me all the answers to actually fix my own health. It it wasn't doctors. You know, doctors for three years had no clue what the hell was going on with me. They had absolutely no clue. You I felt hopeless. So going through all... yeah, And they say that it's all in your head, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, they gave me so much... Medication for depression, medication for anxiety. Medic- Do you want another pill? No, <laughs> I, I just want to be okay. I think something wrong with me. So I think that now, th- I've been in the Institute of Health for three years now. I've never felt so empowered to work towards my future. Like, And I say this with so much confidence. I never felt... First of all, the level, my energy is up to the roof. It's 10 p.m. and I want to go for a walk. If I didn't get my steps done, it's easy to get done. I actually, I'm healthy. Mm-hmm. I have the energy. I sleep well. Um, even when I don't sleep well, I want to wake up. I want to jump out of the bed to live this life. There you go, Brett. You're getting lucky tonight. <laughs> 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 Uh, yeah, that that how that also helped the aspect of my relationship as well. I can say that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's I do today. Yeah, it's I'm a completely different person, and that's because of the health first approach mm-hmm. of me looking after my health first to be able to live the life and become the person I need to become to do what I want to do in life. I never, ever have been in this position in my life, in my life, uh, coming, growing up from the Amazon in Brazil, being exposed to crazy things, you know, and um, illness and disease. This is the healthiest time of my life. And I am excited to the things that we're going to be, be able to build me, my family, my business, my community, my friends. Like I'm excited to get out of the house and see people. So um, I'm super grateful for being here right now, really. Really, I I owe so much to my friends, you and Jake and, and my family, my partner, Brett. And um, yeah, I do, do love life. And uh, I, I don't remember when it was the time previously that I've said that ever. That's beautiful. And it's really reflective on 
how much your girls in your community really love you and appreciate you because yeah. you're you're doing an amazing job at th- empowering yeah. more women out there to love their bodies, yeah. mm-hmm. which is incredibly powerful. I mean, you've got women flying from <laughs> eastern states to come <laughs> over here to, you know, to do photo shoots with yeah. you and it's really beautiful and it's been very empowering considering from you know, even seeing your journey from when you started to now and, you know, the bubbly – Sylvie, that that comes through. It's, I have it's, energy now. Yeah, absolutely. You do. <laughs> yeah. You do. I'm not gonna lie. You do. Yeah. I remember when you came in. You said, you know, I went to walk at 10 at 10 p.m. last. I was like, what? You're usually in bed. <laughs> yeah. So it's it's really beautiful, and um, I think it's really important, mm. you know, that your story continues to come out because there is so many women that's probably been in your shoes and unaware of it, you know, or they're fighting case like there's a new a. Um, a major case coming going out at the moment against another surgeon over here in Australia with um, amongst multitude of women for um, you know implants being ruptured and going wrong. Wow. So, and, and that's currently happening now, which is how I managed to find Mark, Dr. Mark Lee. So through you, of course. <laughs> so it's really interesting that there is not enough education out there about it. And this is hence why we're doing this podcast. Yeah. And I think your story can really influence and impact so many women out there who are considering breast implants. Yeah. And it's um, definitely not an easy thing to open up. No. Now you you make yourself vulnerable for judgment mm. and people will judge you no matter what anyway. So I might as well get on board with this because even in my circle of clientele, there are clients that ask me about it. Should I ask if I want to put breast implants? What do you think about it? They have no idea. Mm. So I'm very um, happy that you're actually providing this level of information that uh, is still a lot of people don't know. Mm. You know, and we could be saving lives here, really, truly. Absolutely. Yeah. So for the audience who are watching this podcast or listening in. <laughs> What are some three? What are some tips that you can kind of give them from your journey? If you th- if you are thinking about putting breast implants, do your research. I'm not saying not to do it. It's your body. It's your decision. You do whatever you want to your body, uh, but try to find it, first of all the reason of why you want to do this, and talk talk to people. Reach out to people that had good experience and had bad experience with that and do not believe in in everything that the doctors are going to say to you or the big pharmaceutical industry is going to say to you that you have 20 years of warranty if something goes wrong we're going to help you we're going to pay for everything they pay for nothing absolutely nothing uh they will laugh at your face like pretty much so um my main advice to you, like I'm almost 40 years old right now. I have been 20 something years old, super excited about putting my first breast implants in. I'm telling you right now, it doesn't fix what's inside of your head. Your lack of confidence and lack of self-love has nothing to do with your boobs. And I'm going to tell you, it does not fix it. It took me many years to realize what it is that I need to be fixing my heart and in my mind to accept my body, to really connect with myself and the person that I truly am. And that has absolutely nothing to do with your boobs. <laughs> they might help, but it doesn't fix anything. So I would suggest you to look for the right help and the right support of women and network that can support you and find the love for yourself of without the implants. That's my recommendation. Powerful. Thank you, Sylvie. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me today. Uh, Your story is really empowering and very inspiring. So thank you so much for sharing your story because I know it's going to impact a lot of women out there. And uh, this is just the beginning. Yes, I feel this way. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. Thank you. There we had it. We've heard from Silvana Lima, who's one of our long-term students in the Institute. And just hearing her journey is incredibly powerful. Um, She's not only gone through a bit of medical malpractice and experienced a whole plethora of health issues, not to mention ruptured implants. Yes, ladies, that can happen. And sometimes you become a priority when this does happen 
but if you're doing it outside of your own state or town, it's going to take a long time for you to actually get there. So unless you've got the funds and you can do it then and there. But just know that there are repercussions and there are consequences that whether you feel them immediately or you feel them six months down the line like what Sylvie had or even on day one from when she had her second lot of implants which ruptured, this shit happens and it's important for you to do your research. Many years ago, there wasn't much studies on this. Now there is. And if Dr. Mark Lee is saying that he's taking more implants out than in, he guarantee he wouldn't be the only surgeon going through the same thing. And the fad is past. The new fad is literally learning to love your own body and have the confidence and the self-esteem to and learn to love yourself so that you don't need to go through surgery to make yourself feel beautiful. You already are beautiful and it's important for you to now go on that journey of self-discovery and really lift yourselves up. Thank you.